Welcome to SBS News in Easy English. I'm Assam Al Ghalib. New South Wales has recorded 1,281 local COVID cases today and five deaths. Premier Gladys Berejiklian says the state is getting closer to having 70% of people fully vaccinated. Health officials are expecting COVID infections to be at their highest in the next week or so. An increase in hospitalization and intensive care will be likely in early to mid-October. Ms. Berejiklian says the forecasts will be made public today. So that's what the best modelling tells us at this stage, but I do want to qualify that by saying that a number of variables are associated with that modelling. But as Dr Chan and the Minister and myself say almost every day, the best way we can keep people out of hospital, out of our intensive care units, is by getting vaccinated. And we've already seen what a difference vaccination makes. The higher the vaccination rate, uh, the lower number of proportion of people who end up in hospital. Victoria has recorded 246 new low local COVID infections. It's focusing on vaccinations of Year 12 students today. 121 cases are linked to known outbreaks, with the source of the remaining 125 infections under investigation. The state will remain under tough lockdown restrictions until at least 70% of eligible Victorians receive their first vaccine dose, expected by about September the 18th. Premier Daniel Andrews says that was initially forecast for September the 23rd, but is five days ahead of schedule. Not only do I want Christmas to be as close to normal as possible, I want to do everything I can and appeal to our community to join me in that work to make sure that the tasks, the burden, the challenge that our, particularly our nurses will face in the coming weeks and months, let's not make that job any harder than it already is. It's incredibly difficult. Year 12 students in the ACT have been given two weeks from today to get vaccinated against COVID-19 so that they can sit their exams in person. Chief Minister Andrew Barr is urging students to book an appointment through a government clinic or their GP if they have not already. The territory has vaccinated more than 70% of people aged over 16 with a single dose. The first batch of 4 million Pfizer doses from London have arrived in Sydney. The 450,000 doses will be distributed around the country based on populations in each state and territory. Australia's COVID-19 Task Force Commander, Lt. Gen. John Fruin, has told Channel 9 he's worried about people who are hesitating. I've got one eye firmly fixed on uh, hesitancy issues. Uh, again, I, I say we've got, we've got the supply, we've got the distribution networks now. We've now got more than nine and a, about 9,400 uh, places people can go to get vaccinated. Uh, we intend over the next couple of weeks to make that more than 10,000. So really it all just does come down now to, to people turning up. Almost 38% of Australians are now fully vaccinated. The First People's Assembly of Victoria will hand over the responsibility of truth-telling to the new Uruk Justice Commission. It will investigate injustices experienced by Aboriginal people since colonization. It includes massacres, stolen generations, slavery, intergenerational trauma, cultural loss, land theft, sexual exploitation, and all forms of historical and current harm. These histories will become part of the state's official records, and the Commission will recommend actions that pave the way to widespread reforms. The federal government's National Summit on Women's Safety is underway 
to address violence against women and children. The two-day event is now taking place virtually with panel presentations and speeches to be publicly streamed online. Discussions will focus on sexual violence, forced control, financial and technology facilitated abuse, sexual harassment at work, abuser interventions, and violence against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says primary prevention is part of Australia's long-term national strategy so that women can live free of fear. Together, we can listen, we can learn, and we can make change. We can identify barriers and behaviours, practices and gaps, so that Australia is a safer place for every Australian woman and girl. We can draw on lived experience and research findings through this summit and turn them into meaningful action. We need to change behaviours and attitudes so that we stop violence before it starts. Advocates want political leaders to commit to reducing sexual, family and domestic violence backed by more funding. I'm Assam Al-Ghalib. This is SBS News in Easy English.